Hi, this is Varun Haran. I'm senior editor with Information Security Media Group. I have the pleasure today of speaking with John Gunn, who is the CMO with Vasco. And we're going to be talking about security versus ease of use, which is an age-old debate in security. Uh, do you make it really difficult to get into something or do you make it easy for the end user and try and secure it at uh, the back end? And John's going to shed some more light on this and maybe share some recommendations as well. So John, uh, when you talk about the uh, fraud uh, landscape and the security landscape and banking institutions and financial institutions today, what are some of the concerns that crop up? Well, there's two giant concerns. One is the significant losses that financial institutions in North America are suffering because of fraud, because of criminal hacking attempts. You know, and you see headlines about you know a big breach at Equifax or Anthem. But uh, banks have small losses every day that add up to very large losses in total. Uh, banks in North America are losing more than $10 billion a year uh, to hacking and fraud, and a significant number of transactions they're processing are actually fraudulent. Uh, so that, that's the challenge that, that we're addressing with our solution. Right, you know, as, as fraud goes up, you're finding anti-fraud spending also going up, but you're not really, we're not able to achieve the result that we want out of it. So what do you think is broken in the entire ecosystem that requires attention? Yeah, you, great question, and you could view it as broken, because on the surface you have financial institutions that every year are increasing their spending on IT security by a double-digit amount, 20% you know, or more, but their losses to fraud uh, are increasing. For example, application fraud, where a hacker or somebody with a false identity will try and get an account, get credit, and then misuse that and not pay it. Uh, last year was $1.8 billion in losses, collectively, that banks suffered, and this year it'll be $2.2 billion. Uh, so they're spending more, but they're losing more, but the a number of attacks and the onslaught of attacks is increasing even faster, so in a way it's successful in that it's holding back the losses from being much bigger, but it's not going in the direction that everybody wants it to, that us as a security vendor and that financial institutions need it to go where it comes back down. Okay, so we're maintaining the status quo but not really bringing it down. Yes. Okay. Good so way to view it. What, what would you recommend banking institutions do, you know, in their approach to real-time fraud prevention? Is such a thing possible today, or is it just something that we talk about academically? Well, we believe it's very possible, and you mentioned real time, and that's the key. 87% of fraud is discovered after the fact by financial institutions. That means the money's already gone, it's, it's not coming back. And we think it should be 99%. And the primary challenges that, that banks, credit unions, all financial institutions face is that the attacks are so sophisticated. Some of them are state-sponsored, state and some of the criminal organizations have hundreds of people in them that are very gifted hackers. So the, the primary challenges are choosing the right vendors. There's 1,300 vendors to choose from. Financial institution has to decide, okay, which, which vendors should I put in my security stack? And then it's a matter of bringing them on. They have to vet the vendor, they have to meet security approval, they have to look at the impact on the customer experience. And, and that's, that's a lengthy process. It, it takes a bank, a larger bank, one or two years to do that. So this is really a moving target. And then the third thing is, if they've got three solutions, five solutions, 10 solutions, most of these solutions were not, not designed to work together. They were designed in a discrete manner, so it, it loses that efficiency. Right, right. So right. We're, we're taking a different approach with, with the platform we're introducing this year. Okay, so you know, how do you provide that security and assurance that is required by these institutions in a user-friendly manner? You know, which is to say, in a frictionless manner for the end customer. We, that's the key because you know, if they're losing, if they up security in a significant way, they could they could bring those ten billion dollar losses down tomorrow. But if they made, if they inconvenience their customers, they'd lose those customers and their losses from revenue and business would be greater than the losses to hacking. Right. So it's having that balance. So our new platform brings together these different solutions. They can onboard them quickly. It's an open platform. So it becomes much more modular. Integration takes you know, weeks instead of months or years. And all the solutions talk to each other so we can identify fraud in real time and instead of looking at just one element, a binary element, 
do you have your password? Okay, you have access. We can look at a dozen or a hundred or a thousand indicators of fraud. We can judge that, that transaction request during the request in real time as to the risk level and adjust the level of security. So imagine you went to the airport and everybody could just walk on the plane except the one person was really a bad actor. We'd all save massive amount of time. That's what we will enable banks to do. Identify just the few bad actors so that everybody else has the convenience they, that bank wants to deliver. Sure, okay. So uh, the final question I'd ask you is that as a thought leader, as a practitioner yourself, what is something in cybersecurity today and the fraud landscape, you know, the two different but very, very closely allied domains, what is something uh, in this domain that gives you most concern? The most concern? It, it's the most, it gives me great concern, but also a lot of optimism. And that's, that's artificial intelligence, okay. machine learning element of that artificial intelligence. We've introduced that in our products, where it can look at, at patterns, it can look at all these different data points and, and identify fraud in real time. And that's a tremendous benefit in, in stopping fraud. But this capability is also available to the attackers. Sure. So you know, with our, with our scanning system, launching attacks, or, you know, they're learning which attacks are successful and which are not. They can use artificial intelligence as well to make their attacks more rapid. When they identify vulnerabilities, they can attack more quickly. So it's this great tool we have in defense, but we know it'll also be used by hacking organizations against our clients. We just want to stay ahead of that curve so that banks can fulfill their promise of these exceptional customer experiences while delivering the security that today they can't yet deliver. Do you, do you think that's possible? I mean, we have traditionally absolutely. always been one step behind the <laughs> attackers. So I absolutely believe it does. Optimism it, there, yeah. it, it's the approach. Right. It's that, do you have the solutions that are designed to work together and designed to work in real time? So it's the approach that's changing. Sure. The, the hackers already have that all coordinated. What we'll allow banks to do is to have that same coordination of solutions so they'll be able to have a stronger position. Okay, great. great. Yeah. Thanks, thanks John so much for taking the time and sharing your insight today. Oh, it's been my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. It's been yeah. talking to you. So that was John Gunn, who is CMO at Vasco. For ISMG, this is Varun Haran. Thanks for watching.